Welcome to Yvonne Meets Food, where I share my passions for making food, eating food, as well as traveling the world to discover an even more delicious food. Today is our very last day in Brussels. So this pretty much is going to be the last day of our European trip this November, which is very sad. But because it is our last day in Brussels and in Belgium, we wanted to end it with a mini self-guided tour of waffles and chocolate eating here in Brussels. Because we're in Belgium, there's also a very extensive beer menu as well. So we're going to get two different waffles. One is going to have sugar, so just plain powdered sugar, which is the traditional way of having a waffle here in Belgium. And then we're also going to have one with chocolate, because who can resist chocolate since we're here in Belgium? And these waffles, just as an FYI, these are going to be Brussels style waffles. So they're going to be rectangular in shape. They're not going to be as dense and as chewy, at least that's what I read, as Liège waffles, which are the types of waffles that we had in Bruges yesterday. So we're going to see how these are going to taste and how they're going to compare to Liège waffles. And of course, how they're going to compare to the mainstream waffles that we get back home. So Mocafe is actually within the gallery, Gallery du Roi which is a very busy place as you can tell. There's a lot of people coming and going, both locals as well as tourists. There are all kinds of chocolate shops, little boutiques that you can you know, peruse and browse. And so there's gonna be a lot of people coming around. So we got two Brussels style waffles. One is just with this powdered sugar as you can see here, and the other one which we set aside but we'll make sure to take a bite into is with the chocolate. So we are going to take a bite into these and see what these are like. So I can already tell when I dig my fork into this that it's already way lighter than the Liège waffles. It's quite large as you can see. It's very easy to cut into. You really don't even really need a knife. So I'm just gonna take a bite. It's very airy on the inside. So here goes. Hmm. Smells really light and sweet. is really nice. You can tell it's like kind of eggy. It's also very redolent of vanilla. And the powdered sugar, the powdered sugar, definitely a nice compliment to that vanilla you taste with the waffle. Ooh. You see how airy it is on the inside. It's way lighter than the Liège. There's really no comparison between the Brussels waffle and the Liège style waffle. This one's very airy. You can even see all the like little air pockets in it. On the outside, it's just really crisp. Not as crunchy as the Liège, but just like a very, very light crisp. The way you would expect of a really good pancake. Mm. So now we're gonna have the second waffle, which is essentially the same as the first waffle that we had. The only difference here is that the second one came with a nice little shot glass of pure chocolate. So I'm just gonna drizzle this on top, make it more lush and decadent. Because who can resist chocolate, especially while we're in Belgium? Nah, what the hell? <laughs> milk chocolate. I actually think this is more bittersweet. It's really thick and rich. <laughs> so we're gonna take a bite of the same waffle, well different waffle, same waffle style, but this time drizzled with a ton of this delicious melted chocolate. Some more chocolate on this bite. Looks pretty doused, right? Okay, here goes. Mm. Ooh, this is super yummy. 
really light. Chocolate definitely makes it a bit heavier. But this would be a very decadent dessert and an even more decadent breakfast than you would actually have it in the morning as your first bite. The chocolate unfortunately drowns out the vanilla notes of the waffle. And it also makes it less airy because, well, chocolate's obviously going to be denser. And once you combine it with the airiness of the waffle, it kind of almost cancels out the airiness. It just becomes, like, heavier. <laughs> it's really good. Definitely very satisfying. The shape of it is very reminiscent of the average American waffle that you would find back home in the States. But it's definitely lighter. It's not as heavy as say, and I know this could be like a bit insulting, but like an like a Eggo waffle, <laughs> it's not gonna be that heavy. It's definitely much lighter than that. And the flavor of the vanilla is definitely more pronounced. You can tell it's made with love. So our beers also came out really quickly. Again, we ordered two beers. One is a Bouche de Noël. If you're not familiar, Bouche de Noël is a really popular and fancy French cake that has many, many layers that is very, uh, I guess it's very Christmassy. It's always one of those cakes that you find in French family homes around Christmas time. So that is this one. And then we also got a glass of La Chouffe. So a friend recommended that I try this while here. It's supposed to be a blonde ale. I actually really love the glass because I really love cutesy things. So not only does this glass have a little, I don't know, you call them an elf, a gnome, but if you were to buy a bottle of La Chouffe, they also have this little gnome guy who's on it as well. So it really gets me because I love the cute stuff. And we're gonna take a taste of both of these together to see what they're like. So I'm gonna try the Bouche de Noël first, so. Cheers. Oh, wow, okay. So this is really interesting. In the beginning, when you smell it, it kind of has like some, some sort of like a creamy, like slightly sweet, but like coffee smell. And it almost seems like it's gonna go down as an IPA. But as you kind of swish it around your mouth, and then as it goes down your throat, they're kind of like these strange, like caramelly, like honey notes that are a bit surprising. And it also has like a bit of an aftertaste of some sort of hops, so kind of like an IPA. But those sweet caramelly notes and the honey notes, definitely a surprise when I tried this. Okay, so now we're gonna try La Chouffe. So, have high hopes for the gnome. Okay. Cheers. Mmm, this one's really, really nice. But definitely like a blonde ale, kind of like something that you might have during warmer months, but it has kind of like these strange fruity notes that are kind of towards the end. And the smell is just very crisp. Again, kind of fruity. Might even kind of resemble pear. This one's definitely really refreshing. Really like, I think I would prefer this one over this one. This one's a bit strong for me but I'm not usually a beer drinker, so I definitely lean towards the fruity flavors. I don't really think that having beer with waffles is necessarily a Belgian thing. I think we just kind of mashed all of them together because it was convenient for us. And Mocafe serves all these delicious things and we wanted to try them. I do think that for the waffles, you know, they, they really, because they're the subtle vanilla flavor, even though it's subtle, it actually like really comes out quite well. They really don't need more than just a simple dusting of this powdered sugar. Of course, if you want to make it more decadent, feel free to order it with fruit. Sour cherries is apparently a very <laughs> popular topping here, as well as with chocolate, of course. But I think that overall, 
these waffles, the Brussels style waffles, they're very deceptively light. So I was just saying earlier that I could easily eat like probably four or five of these and not even realize that I got through so many because of exactly how airy and light they are. They're really crisp on the outside, very soft, airy on the inside. There's really like no other word to describe it other than airy. And these are definitely easier to go down in terms of having, you know, multiple of them. I probably couldn't really sit there and eat multiple Liège waffles because of the fact that they're much denser and much heavier. <laughs> So that's French for vital waffle because as we all know, waffles are vital to our survival and our existence. So this is on in a main street, super busy today because it's Saturday and there's tons of crowds. There was a really, really long line to get these waffles actually because it's not an actual sit down place. It's literally just a stand in a store where you can, there's one line where you line up to order your waffle and then a second area where you go to pick up and they're super efficient they're really fast you can pay by credit card and by cash which is really helpful and then the other nice thing is when you when you actually come to pick up your waffle you can actually see them making the waffle so you can see all the action so you can see the fact right away that these are Liège style waffles the reason that you know that is that they have dough that is already prepared shaped and measured ready to go and so as because the turnover is really high here because there's so many people who want these waffles they are constantly replenishing them making them fresh and then when you order them if they already happen to be pre-made they reheat them for you so when our server gave these to me they are super hot i could barely even hold them even though they have like these little cardboard carriers as you can see here that are also branded so they're just a handful of options. You can get these waffles from Vital Golfa plain. So that just means that it, sh it has butter and it has a vanilla flavor. You can also get them with chocolate. You can get them with whipped cream. You can get them with some jam. We decided to get two. So this one here is the speculos flavor. So that is basically like the really Belgian flavor. So that's kind of like a lot of butter, different spices, sugary of course. And then we've also got the original or the plain. So this one is the vanilla with the buttery flavor. So we're gonna try these out and see how they are. So we're gonna try the, the waffle with the butter and the vanilla flavor first. So that's this one. Mm. You can tell there's tons of butter. You can smell it like all over. You can even see it glistening on the top. Mm. Oh my gosh. This one's super caramelly on the outside, even though it's no caramel. It is so good. So I think that the reason it tastes caramelly on the outside is because it was put on a cast iron pan. So the dough really crisped up on the outside to give it that nice caramelly flavor on the inside, especially with all that butter. That super crunchy. Super, super crunchy on the outside. Really dense, but and airy as you keep chewing into it. And you can tell, that's pretty doughy on the inside too. And now we're gonna try the speculose flavor. Mm -hmm. So this one, similar to this one, feels very caramelized on the outside because of those crisp edges. It's really crispy, really crunchy. And then the inside, it's also really soft and a little bit gooey. You can actually see if you look really closely that there are these kind of, I don't know, crystal, like sugar crystals that are on the inside. You can visibly see them when you take your bite and then look at the enards of the waffle. Warm, spicy, 
buttery all at the same time. See, these waffles are so sticky on the outside that when I tried to peel it off the cardboard, it would stick. We got waffle residue on the cardboard. <laughs> These waffles are definitely very decadent. This speculose one in particular has these really large sugary crystals in them. They just make them really crunchy. Make you feel like, okay, you're definitely really indulging. I would probably say that overall, both the Brussels style waffle and the Delia style waffle are amazing. This kind of depends on what you want. So if you want something that's super decadent, much richer, much crunchier and also denser and chewier you definitely opt for the Liege waffle but if you want to indulge and have something that's a bit lighter you should look for a Brussels waffle In the next installment of our Brussels self-guided chocolate and waffle tour, we are actually back at our hotel in the comfort of our room because we wanted a place to sit down where it was warm. I could actually shed all of my layers. And we stopped by a very famous chocolatier which has been around for exactly 100 years, which is called Mary. Or as they say here in Brussels, they would pronounce Mary Mari. So Mari is a chocolatier which is really famous here in Belgium. It is actually the first chocolatier in Belgium which was founded by a woman by the name of Mari. So it is a 100 year anniversary and that is why they have all kinds of really beautiful hand illustrated boxes which have the original illustrations that she herself did by hand. So this bag that we got as a result of buying a bunch of chocolates there, this actually is hand illustrated by her, or copies of what she um, would have done in the style that she would have done years ago. And then we also got one of the 100 year anniversary boxes, which has a compilation of a bunch of her different chocolates. She actually got really famous because the king and queen of Belgium favored her chocolates and actually had her design chocolates specifically for the royal family. So I'm going to open up this box and we'll just take a taste of a couple of these. So these truffles are all handmade. They have these really beautiful molds. So we're randomly going to choose three of them. I'm going to choose this one that has this really glistening nutty top. Okay, here it goes. Looks like it's milk chocolate on the outside and then the top seems like it's like a mix of caramel and some sort of like nut. Hmm. Hmm. That top is super solid. Now it gets really chewy. Now it's really crunchy. And then the inside, the ganache is like milk chocolatey and really soft and very very silky so the second one we're going to try is the praline with mary's with Maddie's name on it and i don't know what the filling is so we're going to find out together mm. definitely more of a dark chocolate very rich not as sweet as that very first one that we had you can tell this is really nutty too oh you know what? It's hazelnut. Mmm. So this is oval shaped. It's very pretty. It's got these nice lines on the outside of it and it's got Mari's head on it. Mmm. Oh wow. Okay, this one is definitely the darkest chocolate of all the ones that we've had thus far. It's definitely more bitter on the outside. But then inside, it's this really, really silky, smooth, extremely soft ganache that is super coffee-like. No doubt this one's coffee. Mmm. Coffee mixed with chocolate. This is really yummy. I'm gonna have a tasting of our delicious 
what I think is delicious. Creek, extra creek beer. So extra creek beer, this is gonna have taste of cherry, Marilla cherry, which are used in traditional Belgian beers. And apparently this has been around since 1913, so over a hundred years. Cheers. Oh, and this is also 9% cherries, it looks like. And then the alcohol content is 4.1%. Ooh. Okay, this is definitely one of my favorite beers that we've had. It's very, very cherry-like, very, very fruity. You can barely even tell that it's really alcoholic. Has a nice fizz. It, almost, it really just feels like you're kind of drinking cherry juice. And then after you swallow it, you kind of get that little tingle that says, hey, I'm alcoholic. And you want to introduce yourself to a Belgian beer. This is a really, really good one to start with. It's very fruity. It's almost like you're having juice with fizz and a little oomph, I'm alcohol at the end. 